Good morning. My name is Neil Arwin Mercado, reporter for Inquire.net, and this is the Inside Look. And joining us here today, uh, we're grateful to have here with us San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora. Sir, good morning. How are you po? Yes, good morning, Neil, and thanks for having me. And uh, I'm okay. Ito, araw-araw. Siyempre, ang, uh, <laughs> ang naasikaso natin, yung ating uh, vaccination, yung ating ayuda, yung ating implementation ng MECQ, and of course, the general welfare of the people of San Juan. Alam natin na busy ang si Sir ngayon, kaya thank you, Sir, for accepting our invitation for this interview. So let's dive in sa mga tanong natin, Sir. Let's talk about the COVID-19 situation over there in San Juan, Sir. What is the status so far in San Juan? Okay, allow me to just browse over my notes. Na. Yes, sir. Uh, as of April 19, mm -hmm. uh, San Juan has uh, 730 active cases with uh, 6,446 recoveries mm -hmm. and 164 deaths. Now, uh, please take note that uh, just a day before, which was April 18, San Juan recorded 953 active cases mm -hmm. and uh, last April 17 we recorded 1098 active cases so you will see that uh, after stabilizing at around the 1000 level after ECQ and at the start of MECQ we are now seeing a decline in the number of active cases and of course I'm uh, hopeful and optimistic that uh, this decline will continue in the coming days. So ito na yung hinihintay nating epekto ng uh, ECQ at MECQ. Hindi naman kasi agad-agad mararamdaman yan. It will really take uh, some time. And ito na nga ho yung hinihintay natin. And uh, hopefully, masustain uh, all the way because uh, remember, in 2020, we went through this exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to bring down the number of active cases. In fact, mm -hmm. we expected nung uh, Christmas season, tataas siya. But no, no it, it, uh, it uh, was sustained at around uh, 60 to 80 active cases. In fact, the lowest we had was last February, 30 active cases. So, naranasan na natin to. Alam natin kung anong dapat gawin. And yun naman ang ginagawa natin ngayon. It really just takes some time because as uh, people recover from uh, 10 to 14 days of uh, the virus, no? tsaka lang sila matatag as recovered talaga officially mm. uh, ng DOH. So, hindi yan agad-agad mararamdaman talaga. Mm. So, sir, would you, can you categorically say that the situation over there in San Juan is improving based on the numbers that you just mentioned? Definitely improving, Neil. Uh, ka ako kasi very numbers-based ako. No? Uh, every time I... Uh, make decisions or policies at talagang numbers-based tayo. And numbers don't lie. Uh, lahat ng bilang na to galing naman sa aming city health office, validated by uh, our city health officer. So ito rin yung basis natin really to make assessments. Mm, saan kaya natin ma-attribute, sir, itong, at least from your personal assessment, sir, an improvement in the situation, in the COVID-19 situation over there in San Juan? Where can we attribute this possibly? Well, yung ECQ and MECQ definitely talagang nabawasan yung bilang ng tao uh, outside their homes. No? And yun naman talagang very critical dyan. The less number of people in the streets means less possibility of infection. So, yun ang uh, talagang expected uh, output naman ng uh, ECQ and MECQ. And nakikita natin siya. Now, how long uh, we will implement? It will really depend kung uh, sustainable ba talaga yung decline. But uh, again, based on uh, historical data from last year, hindi pwedeng biglang bubuksan mo na naman ang economy just like that because tataas na naman siya. No, magiging vicious cycle lang eh. If uh, uh, bukas, sara, bukas, sara, di ba? So paulit-ulit lang siya. So kinakalangan talaga once we reopen, meaning once we relax the quarantine status, yung minimum health standards talaga ang importante. Remember, for a very long time, no, nag-GCQ tayo and hindi naman tumaas yung mga cases natin. Even uh, nung Christmas season, mm -hmm. the busiest time of the year, hindi naman siya talaga tumaas. So, ibig sabihin, kaya natin talaga. No, kaya natin gawin ba sa disiplinado and uh, we've experienced that, we've seen that. Uh, what complicates things now is yung mga new variants na mm -hmm. nakapasok sa Pilipinas sapagkat 
uh, Okta Research and DOH and medical experts say that they are really highly infectious, mas uh, mabilis matransmit. So ito yung naging complication itong uh, March, yung uh, pagpasok ng mga variants which hindi naman nakapasok nung previous year. So yun yung main difference talaga from this year to last year. Mm -hmm. Sir, you mentioned kanina na even San Juan City experienced itong last year. We were able na pababain itong number of cases and then tumaas ulit, sir. From your assessment, sir, what went wrong, sir, noong time na yon na bakit tumaas ulit yung number of cases natin? At least from San Juan, sir. Alam mo, kahit ako tanongin mo ako pa ulit-ulit, it's very difficult to say because Yeah. San Juan has been doing the same uh, protocols naman since last year. So ako, I would really point my finger dito sa variants. Uh -huh. Kasi yun yung, yun yung factor na wala last year na meron ngayon. Eh. Uh -huh. Wala naman kami binago sa aming uh, mga ordinances, aming mga health and safety protocols. In fact, uh, nasustain nga namin for a very long time yung mababang bilang. And then nagkaroon ng surge hindi lang sa San Juan but all over Metro Manila. And ang pinaka-factor na present na hindi present last year ay itong mga bagong variants natin na kahit naman ng Okta Research at ang uh, DOH nagsasabi, talagang uh, mas infectious siya, mas nakakapanghawa. Uh -huh. And uh, even ngayon may mga younger citizens natin ang nagkakaroon ng COVID which hindi natin masyadong naranasan yan last year. Uh -huh. What is the city government doing, sir, to make sure na hindi na mauulit itong mula sa pagbaba nag-surge ulit pataas sir. Well, uh, ito na we really have to sustain itong uh, efforts natin in ensuring that people really comply with the minimum health standards. Ito lang pag sundan lang talaga ito malaking bagay na. Eh. Uh, we can have all of these ordinances, all of these protocols pero kung hindi sumusunod ang tao, sayang lang. In fact, uh, ang gusto ko nga sana na mismong nasa puso natin yung disiplina. No? Hindi kailangan hulihin, hindi kailangan multahan. Yan naman, At dapat kahit walang nanonood, kahit walang uh, na nakatingin sa inyo, alam nyo dapat kung anong dapat gawin. Because this is for our own good. No? Huwag na nating isipin na mahuli tayo, makita tayo na. Isipin natin, no? pag uwi natin sa ating mga tahanan, na safe tayo, safe yung uh, family natin. And... Uh, Historical data will tell us naman that uh, in the end, it's really the minimum health protocols that will save us mm -hmm. from the virus. Ako, I experienced being positive already uh, in spite of uh, being careful for one whole year. Mm -hmm. As in, dire diretso for one year, lumalabas ako, umikot ako sa barangay, I inspect, I monitor. Hindi ako nagka-COVID. And then, uh, out of nowhere na lang, nung, uh, nung uh, March 1, uh, After a uh, routine test ng February 28, tumabas yung results ko ng March 1, nag-positive ako. So that means uh, kulang pa rin uh, yung ginawa kong effort for one whole year. At some point, you know, uh, nagka-COVID pa rin ako. So this means I have to triple my efforts sa sarili ko to make sure it does not happen again. And uh, siguro pwede ko nang i-share talaga no, na isang game changer dito ay yung vaccination program natin. Because once uh, people get vaccinated, they get protection from the virus. Hindi man siya 100% protection, pero mas mabuti may protection ka sa katawan mo kaysa totally wala. Let's talk about vaccination, sir, since you opened up the topic, sir. Uh, what yes. is the status naman, sir, ng vaccination program in San Juan? Okay, so ito, based on my uh, data again, no? uh, we have vaccinated 10,180 San Juanenos and uh, 2,510 are senior citizens, 3,215 are persons with comorbidities, and 4,455 are medical frontliners. So ito yung ating uh, bilang ng mga nabakunahan since we started our uh, vaccination program. At tuloy-tuloy lang naman po tayo. In fact, uh, every single day except uh, for Sundays, uh, tayo nagbabakuna ng ating mga mamamayan. Pero note, uh, Neil, no, na dependent tayo sa supply ng mm -hmm. bakuna. Uh, we procured 100,000 doses 
uh, using our uh, San Juan uh, LGU funds. However, this is under uh, the procurement under the city government, not under the national government, sir. Tama po? Correct. Yes, ito yung uh, city government procurement. Uh, expected namin darating yung supplies on uh, July. So right now, dependent pa tayo sa national government allocation. So kung ilan ang binibigay sa atin, yun ang nababakuna natin. At yun ang gusto ko maintindihan ng ating mga mamamayan because a lot of them, of course, are very eager to get vaccinated. However, we are constrained with the supply that we have. So whatever supply we have, yun ang binavaccinate na amin. Ngayon, pag dumating na yung 100,000 doses, which ang um, San Juan mismo na procure, ibig sabihin, kontrolado na natin yung supply. Mm -hmm. That's good for 50,000 San Juan mm -hmm. na two doses each. No? Mas mapapabilis na natin yan. Mm -hmm. Kahit naman manood ka sa news, even internationally, di ba? Ang problema talaga is yung worldwide vaccine supply. So kung ilan yung dumarating sa Pilipinas, remember, hahatiin pa yan. Hindi lamang sa Metro Manila, pati yung ibang mga regions, ibang provinces, even within Metro Manila, hinahati yan sa 17 LGUs. No? So you have to imagine talagang nirarasyon siya. Like mm -hmm. here in San Juan, once DOH detects na our vaccines are down to just around uh, 1,000 doses, magpapadala sila ng another 2,000, another 3,000. Mm -hmm. Good for three days or four days ng vaccination. And then, ganun na naman. So, sinaspread out nila to ensure that everyone uh, well, among the 17 LGUs get their supply. Ito, sir, na pinrocure ng city government. Anong brand dito, sir, ng vaccine, sir? Okay, yung pinrocure ng uh, San Juan ay AstraZeneca. And karamihan ng uh, LGUs sa Metro Manila ay AstraZeneca din. So, ito yung bahagi ng tripartite agreement na pinirmahan namin with the... Uh, of course, the uh, pharmaceutical company and the uh, National Task Force on COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, sir, kanina, that so far we have vaccinated 10,000, tama po, sir, over 10,000. Yes. 10,180, yes, that's correct. 10,000, over 10,000, sir. Um, ito, sir, both doses na bakunahan na po or hindi pa? For all the 10,000, first dose and second dose covered or only first dose? No, puro first dose pa lang yan. In fact, yung second dose natin will start this week uh, mm -hmm. because we started our vaccination program uh, around uh, this time last month. So yung one month nila is up and uh, you know, they will now be informed that they have to come back for their second dose already. Mm -hmm. So we have vaccinated 10,000 and then um, the city government uh, or uh, has procured additional 100,000 covering 50,000 San Juanenos. So that Correct. is 50,000 in total, sir. Um, is this enough? Yung sinasabi kong 50,000 uh, San Juanenos covered by our 100,000 doses. Uh, pwera dyan, meron pa tayong natitirang uh, funds. No? We allocated 50 million pesos to procure vaccines. Hindi natin inubos yan sa isang brand lang. Because uh, at that time, AstraZeneca pa lang ang uh, may EUA non mm -hmm. uh, at FDA approval along with Sinovac. But as the months go by and may nakahita tayo mga bagong brands na nagkakaroon ng EUA and FDA approval, mm -hmm. may flexibility pa rin ng San Juan na mag-procure ng ibang brand na so, makikita natin na nagagamit naman sa ibang bansa, may FDA and EUA dito sa Pilipinas. So uh, hindi namin uh, nilagay yung pondo namin all-in-one na pharmaceutical company to give us also flexibility kasi depende rin yan sa supply, sa availability, sa EUA and FDA approval and so much factors, pati yung cost. No? Of course, the more expensive the vaccines are, mas konti mabibili natin. So the city government is ready. Should there be should there be a need buzzer for additional vaccines, the city government is ready to procure more under its budget? That's, that's correct. Kasi ayaw din naman natin mag-over-procure. Diba? Baka naman sobra-sobra ang mabili natin because yung sinasabi nating 50,000 San Juanen is covered by our city procured uh, vaccines, hindi pa dyan kasama yung allocation from the national government. Uh, the national government through uh, Secretary Galvez has informed all Metro Manila mayors during our uh, Metro Manila Council meeting last Sunday that there will be the doses of uh, various vaccines arriving soon. So, Umaasa kami siyempre na yung supply galing sa COVAX na allocation natin dito uh -huh. sa Pilipinas ay makakatanggap ang uh, Metro Manila LGUs ng you know, malaking quantity. Uh, sapagkat kami, no, ako, and I, I speak 
uh, on behalf of San Juan, and I'm sure all Metro Manila mayors will say the same thing. Lahat kami handa magbakuna. Mm -hmm. Ang kailangan lang namin talaga supply ng bakuna para tuloy-tuloy siya. In fact, here in San Juan, uh, we we vaccinate here at the Field Oil Flying V Center. It's a 4,000-seater indoor stadium. And uh, air condition siya, malaki, malawak. No? So, logistically, it's it's the best venue uh, for us here in San Juan. Ang nababakunahan natin ay 600 to 800 uh, San Juanenos lamang sa ngayon because yung supply na hawak natin, hanggang doon lang din naabot. Mm -hmm. Now, once we can uh, get hold of uh, more vaccines, then uh, logistically speaking, we can vaccinate around 2,000 to 3,000 a day. Per day. In this same venue. Yes, correct. So, ang hinihintay na lang talaga sa the, the observance of the health protocol, sir. Yes, because may ano yan, ano? Uh, per hour ang uh, dating ng ating mga mm -hmm. vaccinees. So, we give them confirmatory texts. Tapos meron silang uh, kanya-kanyang time slot that they have to follow. Hindi yan papapasokin sa venue kung hindi pa nila time slot. Yung mga requirements na hinihingi, uh, they are explicitly mentioned dun sa text. If they miss out on any of the requirements, pasensya na. No? You will have to uh, complete these requirements because at the end of the day, gusto natin yung qualified lang ang mabakunahan. Those who will claim to be senior citizens must prove through no, a government ID or their senior citizens ID that they are indeed seniors already. Mm -hmm. Yung mga nagsasabing na may comorbidity sila, nagre-require kami ng uh, medical uh, certificate or prescription. So lahat ito, may gatekeeper kami na nagbabantay na hindi nakakapasok kung hindi nakakapag-comply. So mm -hmm. it's really a supply issue. And once uh, this issue is addressed, uh, I'm very optimistic na mas marami tayong mababakunahan on a daily basis. Sir, you mentioned that the city government has 100,000 na procured from AstraZeneca. Correct. Do we have other deals or at least conversations that we're having with other uh, uh, manufacturers ng vaccine, sir? Yes, meron na tayong mga kinakausap sa ngayon. But uh, kung mag ano lang ito, no? ito yung uh, standby procurement natin. Mm -hmm. uh, once we see that uh, we will indeed need uh, even more then we can uh, easily procure yung uh, yung uh, commitment kasi ng national government ay pinapanghawakan natin in fact uh, prior to us procuring sinabihan naman kami na wag mag-alala sapagkat uh, meron talagang vaccines na darating so yung procurement natin na sarili it's basically our insurance no? parang ito yung backup uh, supply natin uh, if something goes wrong with the uh, supply from the national government. Mm -hmm. Ang uh, expected arrival nito ay July along with most other uh, orders ng uh, private sector din. So, mm -hmm. ito yung iniintay natin at uh, meron na namang mga nakausap tayo na ibang uh, vaccine manufacturers mm -hmm. na naghihintay na lang din ng kanilang mga EUAs at uh, FDA dito po sa Pilipinas. So, hindi rin naman kasi yan parang pumunta ka ng grocery at bumili ka ng yeah. kung ano ng vaccines na nasa rack, di ba? It has to have uh, EUA, meaning the emergency use authorization. Kailangan may FDA approval. Uh, kailangan uh, may tripartite agreement with the national government. Of course, kailangan yung pressure niya pasok doon sa budget namin. So, so much factors that have to be considered. Yeah. And uh, AstraZeneca and Sinovac, pasok siya parehas doon sa mga Sinasabi ko na merong EUA, may FDA. No? That's why sila yung dalawang uh, unang bakuna na ginagamit natin dito hmm. sa Pilipinas. Hmm. Sir, let's talk about uh, hospital ut utilization now. I have some numbers here from the OH. So, okay. San Juan City is currently under moderate, 62.3% per 62 overall bed occupancy, sir. So, uh, there are some hospitals here that are uh, nasa listahan ng DOH. Cardinal Santos currently is currently under high risk, 71.6% of the beds occupied, sir. How do we make sure, sir, na hindi tayo aabot doon sa critical level ng hospital utilization natin? Okay, Neil. Ang ginagawa natin, no, yung uh, triaging, yung it's basically prioritization. Hindi dapat lahat ng COVID patients ay pumuntang hospital. Mm -hmm. So, merong kang triaging na i-conduct 
to determine uh, sino ba talaga yung dapat uh, makonfine na, sino ba yung pwedeng home care muna, sino ba yung dapat ilipat sa quarantine facilities. So uh, again, uh, based on my data, yung occupancy rate ng San Juan Medical Center is at 60%. Mm -hmm. Our Kalinga Center, which is our main uh, quarantine facility, is at 88%. And the San Juan National High School uh, is at 11%. Now, you mentioned that uh, Cardinal Santos, uh, talagang uh, sa totoo lang, ano, uh, marami kasi pumupuntang Cardinal Santos, hindi lang taga San Juan. So even uh, people from other cities, even from other provinces, no, go to Cardinal Santos. So you will really expect na mataas ang occupancy rate niya. Mm -hmm. Ang ginagawa natin is we make sure that uh, properly assess yung mga patients natin. Mm -hmm. So we maximize our local quarantine facilities. In fact, we give incentives para sa mga lumilipat sa quarantine facilities. Na we give them a 3,000 peso incentive mm -hmm. so that they will move to our local quarantine facilities para hindi nila mahawa yung mga kasama nila sa bahay. Mm -hmm. Because kadalasan, sasabihin nila, ay, ayaw akong umalis dito, paano yung pamilya ko, anong kakainin nila, mm -hmm. hindi ako makakapasok sa trabaho. So, uh, we give them 3,000 pesos as an incentive and at the same time as financial assistance para wala na silang problemahin except na gumaling. And, uh, Prior, uh, prior to all of this, ano, talagang plinano nga namin yung uh, paggamit ng facilities namin. Allowed naman kami to use any uh, local government or even national government facilities. Uh -huh. So, ang DPWH ay uh, naglaan din sa amin ng pondo. In fact, in the next uh, probably 10 days, uh, magbubukas kami ng uh, aming container vans. Uh, this can house 52 uh, quarantined uh, patients. Each will have its, uh, well, his or her own room. Merong uh, toilet, uh, may shower, may aircon. So two levels na uh, sets of uh, container vans. You know? So mahabang-mahabang mm -hmm. facility siya. It stretches uh, uh, a few hundred meters long. No? And uh, we will open... Uh, these uh, container vans probably in the next 10 days. So makakatulong yan. Uh, Saan ito ilalagay, sir? Ah, nandito siya sa likod ng pinaglabanan shrine. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's a dead-end road. Uh, so it will not cause any traffic at all. So talagang ano to, specific location na pinili namin. Malayo rin siya sa community. No? Uh, nasa likod lang siya ng aming uh, shrine. And uh, because container vans naman siya, no? uh, hindi siya magiging cause ng any uh, exposure sa ibang tao. Mm -hmm. So, quarantine facility to sir, no? Yes, quarantine facility siya. So, uh, in addition to our existing quarantine facilities, yung Kalinga Center natin can accommodate 130, uh, actually ito, expand na nga namin, no? yung aming uh, Kalinga Center, almost 140, na? Mm -hmm. almost 140 uh, people ang uh, capacity niya. And, mm -hmm. uh, this is currently in a uh, four-story uh, public school building mm -hmm. uh, uh, within the government center also. Mm -hmm. Mabalik ako sir dito sa, sa hospital situation. Again, citing data from DOH as of April 18, sir. Dito sa Cardinal Santos, we have 50 out of 73 isolation beds occupied. Uh, all 14 mechanical ventilators are in use, sir. So ito medyo while Cardinal Santos is, is still not under critical uh, category, sir. It's only at high risk. Uh, medyo nakakatakot din itong 14 mechanical ventilators. All 14 are currently in use, sir. So meron po bang plano ang San Juan City Government to maybe provide additional beds to our hospitals, additional ventilators? Okay. Yung uh, dating 45 uh, bed COVID capacity ng San Juan Medical Center, we've already expanded to 75. Mm -hmm. So, nagdagdag na kami ng 30. And yung ventilator sa natin, hindi yan uh, lahat ginagamit. Uh, that's why nga yung uh, binanggit ko kanina, we are at 60% capacity. Mm -hmm. So, kaya pa nating uh, tumanggap ng mga moderate to severe COVID cases sa uh, San Juan Medical Center. Now, Pagdating dito sa Cardinal Santos Medical Center, syempre may sarili silang mga protocols. They are a private hospital. Yeah. So we really do not uh, meddle, so to speak, uh -huh. with their operations. However, uh, yung ECQ natin talaga, no? yung decision 
to uh, shift to ECQ and now to MECQ. Ito rin ay uh, base kasi sa hospital capacity natin. No? Mm -hmm. Pag nagmi-meeting nga kami ng uh, Metro Manila Mayors, yung IATF, the DOH, isa siyempre sa mga biggest factors why we decided to implement ECQ again a few weeks ago was because of the uh, hospital utilization rate. No? Talagang uh, over capacity na yung ating mga hospitals. And if we did not uh, implement ECQ, I'm sure talagang uh, aapaw yung mga pasyente sa hospital. Uh, mm -hmm. If I may share, Neil, no? nung, mm -hmm. uh, nung February 28, uh, nag-routine uh, swab test ako. And on March 1, I uh, got my results. Uh, I decided to have myself uh, confined sa hospital in spite of the fact na asymptomatic naman ako. Because yung wife ko is a cancer survivor. So I could not stay at home because I might infect her. Mm -hmm. Alam nyo, nung, nung confine ako sa Cardinal Santos Medical Center, mag-isa lang ako sa buong sixth floor. Mm -hmm. As in, there were six nurses uh, assigned to that uh, particular area where I was. And I asked them, bakit ang dami ninyo? Sabi na, sir, walang mga pasyente ngayon. Mm -hmm. So, nung March 1, uh, 61 active cases lang ang San Juan noon. Mm -hmm. And wala talagang pasyente. Nung palabas na ako, uh, March, yeah, March 15, I was uh, given the go signal to go home. Ano na talaga siya? Yun na yung, yun yung panahon na nandun yung surge. No? In na. fact, mm -hmm. ano na talaga? Yung mga tents, uh, yung, yung tents ng Cardinal Santos, yung ER, ano na siya talaga nag-overflow. So yun yung surge na naramdaman natin. Eh? And that is why we really had to make a decision then to implement ECQ. Mm -hmm. uh, last couple of questions, sir. Let's let's talk about the ECQ implementation, sir. Um, you mentioned kanina that the the ECQ or MECQ implementation, sir, really helped in improving the situation over there in San Juan. Has there been any talks among Metro Manila mayors regarding possibly extending this? I know it's the decision. It's going to be the decision of the national government, possibly whether this is going to be extended, but has there been any conversation among Metro Manila mayors about possibly making a recommendation to the national government? Sa ngayon, wala pa naman. It's uh, only April 20, and uh, yung announcement naman ng national government ng MECQ natin is up to end of the month. So mm -hmm. possibly um, a few days before the month ends, uh, mapapag-usapan na yan. Uh, ang uh, Metro Manila Council naman ay kinukonsulta ng IATF parate lalong-lalo na kapag merong uh, possible uh, quarantine status change. Mm -hmm. But for now, uh, wala pa naman siya. But you know, uh, what I would like to see from now until the end of the month is a further decline of our active cases, not mm -hmm. just in San Juan, of course, all over Metro Manila. So kung ano man ang magiging uh, decision whether to uh, maintain or change, definitely ang basis niyan ay yung numbers na makikita natin lalong lalo na towards the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Kayo sir, personally, are you for extending uh, MECQ in San Juan? Well, uh, we are still at uh, right now, ito, uh, 730 active cases. Mm -hmm. So, mataas-taas pa rin yan. No? Although, bumababa na siya, but it's still at a high level. So, I really cannot answer at this point kasi ano pa naman siya, no? it's about uh, 10 days uh, away. So, titingnan natin kung ano yung numbers natin by that time. But again, uh, I'm always on the conservative side kasi para sa akin, ano, uh, at the end of the day, yung health ng ating mga mamamayan ay napaka-importante. Uh, under MECQ, meron naman tayong mga businesses that are allowed already to open. Uh, in case uh, mag-GCQ man, ano, in case mag-GCQ man, uh, yung mga businesses na ina-allow na magbukas, hindi pa naman dito kasama yung mga high-risk industries. Uh -huh. no, kaya nga, hindi nagbubukas yung mga entertainment uh -huh. uh, um, leisure uh, establishments, no? yung mga high-risk na face-to-face -face, such as, uh, let's say, yung mga sporting events, uh -huh. uh, concerts, uh, playgrounds, amusement parks, no? because Ito yung mga high risk and at the same time, ang clientele ng mga to 
uh, yung kabataan which dapat hindi naman talaga lumalabas sa bahay ngayon. So, ano talaga yan? Depende yan sa magiging bilang natin by end of the month. Mm-hmm. So, it, the, you will let the numbers speak for itself po regarding the uh, possible extension of the quarantine protocols over there in San Juan. Correct. Pero at the end of the day, purely recommendatory lang naman kami. Na, mm-hmm. Ang uh, IATF pa rin at ang, uh, ang uh, Pangulong Duterte ang magdidesisyon dyan. Mm-hmm. But uh, usually, kung ano naman ang naging recommendation, more often than not, ay uh, nakikinig naman po ang uh, IATF po sa amin sa so, pag kami naman po ang on the ground talaga they they craft the policies pero kami rin naman ang nag-implement on the ground so kami ang nakakakita at nakakaalam doon sa tunay na kalagayan namin uh, ng aming mga cities mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sir when we talk about extension of quarantine sir uh, possible extension mga ganyan sir na pag-uusapan din siyempre sir ang ayuda because when you put people when you put your residents under quarantine or under lockdowns uh may yung iba, no work, no pay, so they have no source of income right now. Ano, enough po ba yung ayuda na ipinamimigay natin for the residents? And as you know, sir, the ILG has already extended the distribution of the ECQ aid. Is this enough time for San Juan City to finish yung pamimigay ng ayuda? Okay, uh, please allow me to share, Neil, no? na dito sa San Juan, um, during Holy Week, na mahagi kami ng 16th wave ng food box distribution. So that's the 16th time that we distributed food box since uh, COVID-19 started uh, in our country. Mm-hmm. So originally yan, uh, parang Holy Week ayuda namin. No? Kaso mm-hmm. lang nung naka-ECQ, kumbaga naging ECQ ayuda siya. Mm-hmm. Ano yan, ha? local government funded yung 16 ways. This aside yeah. from the the ECQ financial assistance being distributed right now by the national government. Aside ito, sir. Correct. Yes. Iba pa yan. So ito, meron kaming sariling local funding na nilaan because alam ko at naintindihan ko na talagang marami sa mga San Juanenyo ay apektado ng uh, whether it's ECQ, whether it's MECQ or GCQ, hindi na pareho yung buhay ng bawat isa. Uh-huh. Maraming nawala ng trabaho, maraming uh, nawala ng kabuhayan. So we make sure na meron tayong funding for all of these assistance. Ngayon, nung nag-announce uh, naman ng national government na meron tayong uh, ECQ cash ayuda, uh-huh. in fact, uh, we had a choice uh, whether in kind or in cash. No? Ay, pinili ko ang cash sapagkat uh, gusto natin magkaroon ng flexibility yung ating mga mamamayan uh, na gamitin yung pondong ito sa mga bagay na mas importante sa kanila. Uh-huh. Since katapos lang naman ng aming uh, 16th wave ng food tax distribution. So 98 million ang nalaan uh, for San Juan and uh, ang basis natin dito na which I would like to share uh, commonly kasi ito yung nagiging problema sa yeah. ibang lugar. No? Pero ang ginawa namin kasi rito ay uh, meron kasing tinatawag na priority list. Ito yung SAP 1, uh, SAP 2 beneficiaries, mga waitlisted sa SAP, uh-huh. and yung 4Ps. No? Uh-huh. Ang nakikita kong nagiging problem sa ibang LGUs is uh, the determination ng uh, number of members ng family. Ang ginawa namin, we really planned for it in such a way that we had to have a, an objective basis or data to determine ilan ba talaga ang membro ng pamilya. Uh-huh. So ang ginawa namin, Neil, kinalungkat namin at binuksan yung mga boxes uh-huh. ng mga social amelioration cards ng ating SAP recipients. Because when they applied for and received their SAP last year, they filled up a form. They filled up a form wherein they would declare kung ilan bang membro ng pamilya uh-huh. So halimbawa, uh, si Neil, uh, let's take for instance na ikaw ay uh, isang uh, SAP beneficiary, ikaw head of the family. That means, Neil, ikaw, nung nag-fill up ka, dineclare mo may isa kang asawa at dalawang anak. Thus, you have four members in your household. So hindi na yan uh, discretion ng uh, beneficiary nor nung uh, city hall staff namin. So nakalagay dyan for yung payroll na makikita mo when you claim your assistance, nakalagay na ron, 4,000. Mm. Wala na tayong debate 
Kasi ikaw ang nag-declare niyan eh. Ikaw ang pumirma niyan. So pag pinirma mo ron dalawa, then dalawa lang talaga. So naging mabilis ang aming distribution. In fact, tapos na kami. Okay? Tapos na kami doon sa priority list. Yung SAP 1, SAP 2, yung waitlisted, yung uh, four piece Tapos na kami dyan. Anong ginagawa namin ngayon? Yung natirang funds namin, we are now reallocating to other low-income individuals. So, sinama rin natin dyan yung mga pumirma dito sa grievance list or grievance committee. So, we are now assessing and validating. Uh-huh. And we are actually about to finish our secondary list already. Uh-huh. Uh, once we finish our secondary list today, we would already hit around 88 million pesos disbursed out of the 98 million pesos. So, that's already uh, How many percent? 90%. 90%. 90%. Uh-huh. Ano na lang ang natitira? yung hindi pa nagkiklaim. Kasi merong 10% na hindi sila nagkiklaim. No? Even if we have posted their names twice already sa social media, sa ating barangay halls, uh-huh. hindi sila nagkiklaim. So possibly na lockdown sa ibang lugar, possibly uh-huh. uh, naka-quarantine ngayon, possibly positive sila ngayon. So much reasons na pwede no? kung bakit hindi sila nagkiklaim. But we are giving them one last chance to claim uh, which will be itong, uh, next few days. Ngayon, kung hindi pa rin sila mag-claim, Neil, we will now reallocate itong balancing 10 million to other low-income individuals I mean, uh-huh. para naman uh, mapakinabangan yung natitirang pondo. Pinaalam ko na yan nung last IATF meeting namin, nung Sunday, pumayag naman sila as long as we give a chance to the original uh, beneficiaries to claim. But kung hindi namin to gagawin at hindi naman nila i-claim yan, hindi namin matatapos yung disbursement ng pondo. Okay. Forever na lang unclaimed yan, di ba? Sayang naman. So, that's what we're doing now. Clarify ko lang, sir. So, currently, 90% of the funds allocated for San Juan have been dispersed. Tama, sir? And then, Correct, yes. That's after, that's after today. Kasi meron kaming last day today ng aming uh, secondary list. So, <laughs> In the assumption na mag-claim sila today ng uh, around uh, 90% percent no? kasi yeah. usually on the average 10% ang hindi nag-claim. No? We would end up at around 88 million pesos disbursed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if yung mga unclaimed sir ipapamigay natin uh, sa mga uh, low-income families, tama sir? Ano yung deadline right. natin for the claiming sir? Well, um, I'm announcing kasi na yung mga hindi nakaklaim will have until uh, Friday to to claim. In fact, uh, we're preparing the announcement already. So, list, sir, ba- ba- lang- when they see the list? Uh, the- they will, yeah, pina-finalize lang namin. After the last day today ng disbursement ng secondary list, uh-huh. ma-audit na namin yan kung sino yung mga hindi nakaklaim. No? Uh-huh. And then ilalabas namin lahat ng names ulit. They will... Uh, see their names once again in the barangay halls and uh, in social media, it's their responsibility to check their names. Na, hindi naman namin pwedeng uh, tawagan lahat ng libo-libong beneficiary natin. No? Alam naman nila na yan po ay nakapost sa social media. Alam naman nilang ito ay nakapost sa barangay halls. No? Uh, that's why I call on their family members to inform them, no? Kung hindi man sila aware, hindi man sila informed, pakisabihan po sila because we are giving them another chance to claim uh, the assistance that is really for them. Now, if they still do not claim, uh, we will really have to reallocate that to other low-income individuals. Kaya nga mabuti na nagkaroon ng extension because yung reallocation namin para ma-use up yung natitirang pondo, uh, it will take a few days. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, we are targeting to finish uh, the entire uh, 98 million probably by uh, the weekend or early next week. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, that is San Juan okay. City Mayor Francis Zamora. Sir, maraming salamat for giving us a bit of your time. Thank you po, sir. Thank you also, Neil. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to have been able to share all mm-hmm. of this information to you. And uh, sana mag-ingat ang lahat. Uh, ingat tayo sa COVID-19 at uh, I know that uh, there will come a time na talagang matatapos din ito. Talagang hang on lang tayo and uh, mag-ingat na mabuti. Mm-hmm. Again, that is ano, City Mayor Francis Zamora. This is Neil Arwin Mercado for the Inside Look. Have a great day. Thank you.